What's up guys, PJ here from 3D Printing Canada and today in front of me I have two Ender V2s. Now you might be asking myself, PJ, or yourself, PJ, why do you have these printers in front of us? Well, today we're going to actually teach you the difference between Bowden tube and direct drive and the benefits. Okay guys, so today, right here, we've got an Ender V2 bone stock, nothing fancy, stock hot end, stock extruder. So what we'll do is we'll have Jaren zoom in. I'm gonna actually turn the printer around so you guys can see. I can only assume most of you have seen one of these before. Now, if you haven't, here's a little bit of information for you. So this is what you would be calling a Bowden tube extruder. The reason it's called a Bowden tube extruder is because there's this piece of Teflon tube here, the Bowden tube, attached to your extruder. Now, what it does is you've got your spool up here and it feeds through this long Bowden tube into the hot end. And on a stock machine, you've just got one brass gear against the guide wheel, which doesn't give you a lot of pushing force at all. Um, it's great for PLA, it's fine. It keeps the head extremely light. There's not much on here. So it'll keep things like ringing and ghosting down. So that can be a benefit of a Bowden tube. If you never wanna print flexibles or maybe even something carbon fiber, I, I tend to prefer to use the direct drives for that. Um, now, some of the drawbacks on a stock Bowden tube machine and we'll show you again here. Some of the drawbacks with that are this tube actually travels all the way down through what we call the heat sink. It travels all the way down and it sits on the top of the nozzle on the bottom. Now, what happens with that over time is your printer is going to be doing all these retractions so you don't end up blobs all over your prints. And then what's going to happen is this push fitting inside here. So maybe we'll tip forward a bit. So your little push fitting inside here is actually gonna start to wear a groove in this tube. And what's gonna happen on a retraction is it's gonna pull this up a little. And once that groove gets too big, now you have room for the tube to move up and down away from the nozzle. Then what happens in turn from that afterwards, and now this is, this is something that will happen on any tube to nozzle style machine. It doesn't matter what machine you open the, or have, it will happen. So what happens is, is that tube lifts away, lets a little bit of filament out into the throat where it shouldn't be. Eventually it seeps out on top of your hot block. From there you end up with the, the big ball, the big ball of death, uh, which probably means you're gonna have to replace your thermistor and heater cartridge. With that being said, if you still like the Bowden tube and don't wanna run into the problem of having the tube lift away from the nozzle all the time. On a machine like the Ender here, you can grab yourself like a Kraken style heat break. Um, I believe Creality may make some, but our, our favorite and my all time favorite here at the shop is the Slice Engineering CE heat break. The CE stands for Creality Ender. Uh, it works on any of the machines like the Ender 6, etc., where it's just a heat break that's metal. And what happens is this tube that is in here actually stops at the very top of that heat break. So it never goes into the hot zone. You never have to worry about filament escaping. And what happens is, is that heat break and your nozzle in the hot block, they seat together. Okay, so then you've got metal on metal. And if you heat tighten it properly, it shouldn't loosen off and you'll never have to worry about heat creep. So if you do like the fact that Bowden tube is really light and you don't want to switch out to say a direct drive with an all metal hot end, then they're, they're, they're great and you can continue to print with them. One thing is though, with a lot of stock machines, they use like plastic extruders that wear out over time. So you can upgrade to say like a Micro Swiss or a Bond Tech or anything like that and still keep it off to the side. That way you can still have high speeds on here without any ringing or ghosting. So moving forward, we're just gonna move this one right off the bench and I'm gonna pull in the direct drive, which is my personal favorite. So I'll pull off this one and we'll go ahead and we'll bring in our direct drive unit here. 
Okay, so we'll get let Jaren get a couple little close-ups of this beautiful Micro Swiss NG direct drive extruder. I say beautiful because these guys really do a great job. Um, they're always innovating. They're always coming up with ways to make your printer work. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, now, some of the nice features about a direct drive is now the filament's coming off. It's going directly into this little tube, and this tube has nothing to do with anything. It's just a guide, so it doesn't scratch against anything. Now, you're pushing through on this one, I believe after the gears, if I'm not mistaken, I think maybe half an inch, if that, before it hits the, the actual nozzle. So the accuracy is gonna be a lot higher. Um, the precision is gonna be a lot higher. Now you do add some weight, when you go with an extruder like this. It definitely weighs more than a stock extruder. So uh, this is where things like linear advance and firmware tuning for advanced users that want to print fast or say running clipper will come into play where you can use an accelerometer or things like CAN bus to actually still have weight on your head and print fast. Mind you, this new generation Micro Swiss Direct Drive is extremely light. It's all CNC to aluminum. Um, you know, they went ahead and put the pancake stepper with the gear reduction, so it works really well. Now, one thing about Direct Drives, they print flexibles amazing. Now, does every Direct Drive print flexibles amazing? Not a chance. Um, I've had some where, sure, it's a great direct drive, but where the gears, so you've got your two gears and where they actually push the filament down, so you've got the two gears rotating. So if you do buy a direct drive, you should go with a dual gear minimum. But where those gears are turning and pushing the filament in, there'll be something meeting them to create no space between them. Now, if you have a flexible material and there's a space in there, you can actually end up spitting the filament out of the side of the gears into your extruder. Now, depending on the extruder you have, that can strip gears out if it's uh, gear reducted with plastic gears or something. So my personal opinion has been on direct drives is, you know, Bontex have been okay, but if you print carbon fibers and then try to print TPU, you'll end up with it spitting inside the extruder because they're SLS carbon fiber. Whereas like the Micro Swiss, for example, has it's all CNC to aluminum, and where the gears push the filament into the hot end, into your heat break and everything, on this new generation, there's a titanium piece in there. So you could go from carbon fiber back to TPU and not worry about it. On their first generation direct drive extruder, it's a piece of Bowden tube that you cut on a 45 degree angle. So if you were printing carbon and it started to wear out, or it just started to wear out, just for no reason, uh, just from use. Uh, PLA will eventually start to wear that 45 degree angle you cut, but the nice thing is, is it's just a piece of Bowden tube and you can replace it. So personally for direct drive use with flexibles, I always go to the Micro Swiss stuff. Um, there's a few other on the market that'll work, but in my experience, it's always been the Micro Swiss that has been the best. Um, and the nice thing about direct drives is, you know, a lot of them will make it where it's mounting to a plate where you can customize and have your own fan shroud is where a lot of Bowden tube machines, your, you know, the fan shroud they come with aren't always up to par. Um, you're printing new ones anyways, putting new fans on. Um, Micro Swiss really leaves that open for that. Um, but do keep in mind with a direct drive without firmware tuning, um, depending on the weight of it, you will experience more ringing or ghosting as people call it, um, but it's definitely more accurate. So your tolerances will be a lot better, uh, easier to dial in retractions, retraction speeds, etc. So personally, I prefer to run direct drive on all my machines. If they come Bowden tube, I always find a way to make it into a direct drive. Um, so I hope that was really informative to you guys. And uh, we got both printers up here. You got your Bowden tube and your direct drive. I hope this video helps you guys make a decision for what you might wanna do, uh, if you wanna upgrade a printer or not. Um, yeah, we'll see you in the next video, guys.